Hey guys, part two of how to make wargaming videos. I figured since I'm getting so many questions about it and stuff, I'll make it into a series like I did with my airbrushing series. So this video will go in more detail about some um, subjects, and the next video I'm gonna actually film the process of me making a video. Uh, you'll see what I'm doing on the screen. You'll see how you know I film it right in front of my desk here, and um, hopefully that will help you out. Also, one thing I got a comment about. Oh, hey, no shout out. I don't do shoutouts on every single video, okay? I've only been doing it because I've been coming up with ideas and stuff. Usually I don't do it because, you know, either I'm too lazy or I just can't come up with an idea with a really cool, cute shoutout, so. Regular cameras, like this, point and shoot. This actually comes with a video function. And as you can see here, I'll show you a little clip that I actually made in one of my video logs. I don't need this much um, piping, but uh, it's good to have extra stitch. Now, it wasn't HD, but it still did pretty well. It was pretty clear. Um, most cameras nowadays do come in HD. Uh, you could check. If you have a camera, point-and-shoot camera, check if it could do video. And there you go. You have your video camera. Lighting. Lighting is huge. Okay, if you got nice lighting, ambient lighting in your room, your camera will shoot nice, clear pictures. Okay, the more lighting, the nice and bright you are, better that camera could pick up details and stuff. So make sure you have good ambient lighting in your room, okay? Don't point the light in your face, okay? It'll just make your face look bright and you'll look like a twilight vampire or something. What I use is I actually, if you see in the back here, I have a light right there. That's one of those shop lights you can get from any home improvement store, this one right here, okay? And then what I do is I diffuse it, right? So that it's not one light shining in one direction. I put a paper towel over it, I tape over it, and it diffuses the light. So when you diffuse the light, you get a more exposed light source instead of just one direct light source, so it fills up the room. Also, the color of the bulb could be important. You want to get daylight bulbs so that you have a more white light rather than a yellow light. And you can get these uh, compact fluorescent bulbs, uh, you know, the ones that are supposed to save you money, that last longer, uses less wattage. About 6,500 kelvins to 5,000 kelvins, you want to go around there. Uh, it's simply printed on the label as daylight bulb. Tripods. Hold your camera still. Tripod. You could pick one up for like 15 bucks. You know, a cheap tripod, and it'll work just as good. There's actually a golden rule on YouTube, which is keep your videos between three to five minutes. Five minutes is maybe going a little too long. Anything after it is really long. If it's not an instruction video, if you could just do it really quick, do it. Just make it about three to five minutes so that you don't lose the people's attention span. Now, even I do my crazy videos, and I put in like funny stuff and stuff like that. It's still hard to keep their uh, attention, people's attention after, you know, five minutes long. It sucks, but that's just the way that people are sometimes. So, if you keep the video short and sweet, do it short and sweet. Okay, I've seen people putting tips, and then they're like, punching all these tips into one huge long video. Don't do that. One, um, if you could put out a lot of videos, do it, right? Put a lot of small videos out, do it. Second, it helps people find what they need. If you make one long tip uh, video there with a lot of tips in between, people have to search for those tips if they ever want to go back to it. So if you make a lot of small little videos, it makes it easier for people to search for it as well, especially if it's tips, because tips and tricks that are only like three minute long, people love that stuff. They know how to get to it, they know how to refine it if they need to. And a lot of people will favor it so that they can go back to it. Patient releases, um, that's one thing that me and uh, Les talks about all the time. You know, Les says, give them time to miss you. Um, honestly, I don't think anyone would miss me. But um, what I do is I try to, you know, pace my releases on my videos. Now, don't take what I've been doing lately. About a week ago, I just released one out after the other. Um, but you can check. Just check your views. See where it rises, you know, on Insight when you look at your video. After a couple of days, it'll give you uh, the Insight stats of your video. And find out how, how, how the hill builds, how the mountain builds, you know. Um, for me, it's like... Within two days, it hits its peak and it starts petering down. So about every you know sec every two days, I would I should be putting out a video, and that would should keep people going. A lot of people ask me about using music in their video. Um, best thing to do is go to incompetech.com, and he allows you royalty-free usage of his music. Okay, just go there. Don't try to put some music uh, that's that's currently out there that's copyrighted and stuff. Because if YouTube finds it, they will probably pull your video or make it silent so no one can hear it or anything like that. Okay, now we'll talk about being organized, being creative, and fun, right? 
when you shoot a video, have an idea about it. Now, know what you're going to do. If you have to, write a script for it. If you're you know, not sure about ideas, you know, just look around. Take some ideas from me. Uh, mail me. Ask me for some ideas. Hey, this is what I want to do, but I'm not sure how to do it. The most important thing, be yourself and have fun with it, okay? People will know if you're fake or people will know if you're not having fun with uh, doing your videos here. I love doing tutorials. I love talking to you guys about stuff, and I like doing it. But... If you don't like doing it, people are going to notice. You know, if you're going to be fake and pretend that you're not who you are, people will notice. I mean, unless you're trying to do some kind of weird skit or something, um, just be yourself. Have fun. I hate this, man. You guys are always freaking telling me what to do. I hate this. Wait a minute, video. Go fuck yourself. Eat shit and die. In our community, I think tutorials is probably one of the biggest videos, especially painting tutorials, because a lot of people would like to know how to paint certain figures. Um, you're going to have trouble probably with, you know, just videos of showing off your army, or you just sit there and ramble. Um, it's about something that's not about wargaming or something. That's a little tougher audience. It's going to be smaller, and if you're okay with that, that's not a problem either. But what I like to do is just mix it up. Just mix it up like I do, and um, so that you'll get people who will watch your rambles, that like to watch your rambles. If you don't, we'll skip it. Wait for the next video. The other two popular type of uh, videos you can make are Tacticas. All right, we don't have enough out of there. Tacticas make really, really nice videos uh, for this community here. So I want to see a lot more Tacticas out there because I'd make them, but I haven't been playing long enough to actually start doing Tacticas. The other thing is um, Battle Reports. Battle reports seems like a lot of people really, really love battle reports. And lastly, have an iron skin. You're making videos, you're putting it out, it out there in the public. You're going to get haters. You've seen my haters' um, straight up uh, video. You're going to get them. You're going to get people who are not going to like your stuff. Not really hating on you, they just don't like your stuff. Don't get sensitive over it. If you're too sensitive, you shouldn't be making videos. Okay, people are going to comment. There's going to be comments that you will not like. You have a choice of just ignoring them or just do over them. And doing over them is not going to do jack shit for you. Connect to you, your viewers. People like it when you connect to them. People like it uh, when the guy making the videos actually responding to some of the comments. You don't have to reply to every single comment that you know that is made on your videos. Just reply to the stuff that you want to reply to, but do reply. Show them that you are reading their comments so that they will post more in future videos. You thank your viewers for subbing to you. Um, kind of a tedious job. I get the email every time someone subs to me and I keep it in a box and then I'll go through at the end of the day and just go to the channel and thank them on the profile. At the end, ask them what do they think, okay? And promote, you know, people commenting on your videos. You gotta remember, more people that comment, the more people that like, the more people that favorite your videos gets your video out there so that people will know that it's out there and then more people will come. It's not easy. You gotta do a lot of um, you know maintenance work to get your channel going. You know you gotta work at it. You just can't get a shout out. I could do shout outs all I want. I could tell people go and subscribe to this guy. But if you make shitty videos, they're not gonna care. They're not gonna even bother subscribing. I've talked about video responses, right? Make video responses. That actually gets you a lot of subscribers. That will bring people to your channel because when you do a video response, it shows on the person's videos in the comment area and then people will click on it. You'll see a lot of this type of marketing. If you go to like the more popular people that actually turn on their video responses for their videos like Mr. Guitar Man, if you look at their videos, you'll see people respond to the video that has nothing to do with it, whatever Mr. Guitar Man does. But that's one way to get subs. The problem is they're just getting subs of people that don't give a crap about their you know channel. They're just getting empty views. They're just trying to pump up the views so they can get into partnership and uh, make money off it or something. Hot Topics. That's the biggest thing. Find a really hot topic in the community going on right now. Do a video on it. Now, I've been talking about subscribers and viewing ratios and try to get it to a one-on-one -on -one like Les has, right? And I'm kind of, I guess, there sort of, depending on the type of video I do. As you know, I have 1,000 subscribers. I want 1,000 views average. Now, I mentioned empty subscribers. That's, that's like, you know, if you have, like, put it this way. You have 5,000 subscribers and your video gets 50 views each. There's something wrong there. Okay, that means it's just people just subscribe to you just for the hell of it, don't even care about watching your videos. I can't tell you how discouraging that is when you have a shit ton of subscribers, but your views are like next to nil compared to the subscribe you have. That's empty subs. And then you got views, because that's the biggest thing about YouTube, is um, getting views on your video. 
Now, when you start hot topics, you know what's going on in the community. People will search for those hot topics. That's why you want to do a hot topic, um, and that's what you're trying to grab is new subscribers from doing searches. Now, Les he does a lot of Space Marine payment tutorials, and people are wondering, well, why does he do other things? Space Marines are the vanilla army of 40k. It's the biggest army out there. It's a hot topic, so he does all these Space Marine how-to videos, and that's how he builds on this. People do the search on that. I use another example. This is out of you know the war game community, out of the scale model community. I'm going to show you my WoW channel. This is what I mean by hot topics. On my WoW channel, I did tutorials on mods that you would use for World of Warcraft. I do all the popular mods I can, and it's only a few videos if you notice. And if you look, I only have 800 subscribers. I had a thousand, but you know when I quit WoW. Uh, the subscribers uh, started dropping. But look at the views on my videos. You know, 200,000 here, uh, you know, 40K here, 50K here. It's all over the place. But that's what I mean about grabbing hot topics. Once you get hot topics that people will search for, remember in your videos, and this is why I always say, at the end of my videos, I always say, please subscribe, please like, please favorite. Um, just remind them that say hey subscribe to my channel I'm gonna be making a lot more videos so if you like this one you should like the other ones you know and it's about you promoting yourself and you gotta do that alright the end of your videos let them know you know promote yourself encourage comments ask questions so they can answer it in the comments below biggest thing that you could do for your YouTube channel now title description and keywords those are kinda important because they help people search for your videos. Now don't try to trick them and, don't, and say um, hot blonde sucks big cock, right? You know, people are going to get pissed and you're probably going to get banned too. Make sure you're very descriptive with your title, with your description, your keywords. Now if you try to be funny with your title and it has nothing to do with your video or the topic you're talking about, you're not probably not going to get searches out of it. So it's important to keep the title pretty much in line with your video, okay? And the description, put in the description about what you talk about, stuff you covered, as much as you can. And then the keywords is pretty much Put all the keywords in that you think people will search for uh, when they want to look for your video. Community power, that's one of the probably the biggest thing I'd say has going for us as a word gaming community. There is a lot of really cool people out there. A lot of people like to get involved with the hobby and stuff. Sure, we got our haters, we got our trolls, whatever. Scooch them over, but still our ratio in this community is big. Okay, as people that like to help each other, uh, like to come to aid of other people. Network, um, talk to people, make friends and stuff like that. That's how you're going to get the community power. So, you know, when you get to know them and they like you, you like them, you know, they're going to mention you in their videos. They're going to start passing subscribers over to you and stuff like that. But the most important thing is use the power of the community. Now, I forgot to record this earlier, but this is something that I should warn you about. Be very, very careful who you trust. Do not give out your login information to your channel to anyone unless you explicitly know them and trust them. Now, I know this sounds like a public service announcement, but I'm here to watch out for you. We're here to watch out for each other. You might get approached by promoters to promote your channel. I got approached by two for my WoW channel, and I know there's currently one running around our community claiming that they could promote your channel. Leading to that, just be very careful who you work with and who you get to work with. If you're not sure about an individual, ask the video makers around this community that's been making videos. Some of them should already be able to tell you who to avoid. Hey guys, that's it. So if you have any comments or suggestions or tips for other people that are making wargaming videos, just post it on in the comments there. Also check out part one on how to make wargaming videos here. And check out my other two videos on uh, straight up on haters and straight up on um, WG Consortium. So like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and favorite if you love me. Talk to you guys later.